Today I'm back at the greenhouse and I'm working on two projects today. Well, okay, so really I have one main project that I have to get done today. And that is pruning all of the hydrangeas over here. This is Hydrangea Hill. This is what we uh, named this side of the greenhouse. So there's two varieties. I wanna show you how I prune both of them. These were installed last July. So this is second year growth on this plant, on all of these plants. And I'll show you how like we prune all of that back and like kind of like what our thought process is behind that but I'll show you which two varieties that we have so these are both of the rows I have a full row that goes this way and another row that goes this way the top side are the hydrangea tardivas and it's kind of hard to tell by this bloom but this is more of a lacy type hydrangea it gets like this open structure very whimsical for me I really like these they actually are gonna get about between 8 to 12 feet tall and wide so these are gonna be massive but I wanted this this is gonna be the border I, the goal is so that that this grows up so you can't see parking which will be over here and I'll probably have like some other stuff on this side too but this is the border that I need uh, to grow up really tall and then right in front of it are our hydrangea uh, bobos so these are more of the compact bloom style the regular paniculata style that are gonna bloom white and kind of turn into that mauvey green too I really want to keep them in the white color but um, with our heat you know it's just kind of kind of hard to do that in the summer crank never fails these guys were installed last July I mean I think it was like the hottest day of summer that these like the entire landscaping was installed That's, that was the end of our season and the only time gap that I had to get this done and I wanted it to get done they performed amazingly and actually I'm gonna throw some pictures up from uh, when they were in their prime last year I'll throw this up on the screen now I'm so excited for this year because I think this year's blooms are going to be even better. Typically, whenever we it's time to prune all of the hydrangeas, we will throw down our fertilizer into the ground and give them a good start. But I'm going to wait today. I'll show you why. So this is the mulch that we put down last year, last uh last summer and actually I got this free mulch and it was a good mix of like compost material. It also had this crappy wood chunks in it too. So you couldn't actually see this last year because they were mixed in, but as the rain starts to fall and all of the organic matter kind of goes to the bottom and then you're just left with this stuff. <laughs> and it was, you know, like a dark black mulch then, but obviously it has faded. So my goal is to scratch back all of this stuff. I'll kind of show you, I started doing this yesterday, but I'm gonna scratch back all the top stuff and get all the wood chunks out. And if it needs some color, then I'll probably come back and do some mulch dye. Actually, there's a couple of different brands that I wanna try out. I might do, I think that's what I'm gonna do this year. There is at least six to eight inches of a good layer of mulch here. So I don't really have to have more mulch. This is more for uh, weed suppression and to really enhance the ground so it's got a good base like if I can scratch down in here like I did a little bit ago like this is good this is breaking down very well so I really don't need anything else on top of it other than it just needs to be more aesthetically beautiful and not look so raggedy really was hoping I could get away with doing the light colored thing I thought that would look more Mediterranean but the lighter this goes the more unhealthy it looks like I just think dark looks like healthy ground these were the wood chips that we continued to place down. Those were free from the tree company. So I do need to color all of these. So you can kind of see like over here, I started raking down all of those piles yesterday and you're left with a really good dark layer there. So I don't know, we'll see if I do decide to do the mulch dye, I'll want to do it pretty soon before things start to flush back out so that I don't color all of the leaves. You know, that wouldn't be good either. But I know I've never done that before. I did some research on it, so I kind of want to try it out and see if it's worth it because you just wanted dark mulch. Like that's, that's gonna be like several thousand dollars to put that down when just because I want a dark layer of mulch instead of actually needing mulch, I could save like thousands of dollars by doing this dye. So I don't know, we'll kind of see if that's something that I um, pursue or not. I do think that's probably going to be something that I pursue because the color and how it looks is going to be very important to me. I'm going to show you how I prune these hydrangeas. 
Okay, I don't know how well you can actually see this plant, but I'll do some close-ups here in a second. But this is the plant of uh, how much growth it actually bloomed last year. And what I wanna do first is shape. We'd like to focus on shape first. And when I'm thinking about that, I typically like to take off about one third of the plant. Sometimes I'll take it off more depending on how, like on which uh, location it's in. These, because I want them to be more uniform, I am gonna cut them back probably a couple of feet these actually had like some wind damage last year so some of these i actually might cut them back a little bit harder because i want the main base to be a little bit more upright and less leaning and all i'm going to do is come in here and follow all the way to where you see a bloom starting to swell i'll show you that here in a second and you're just going to cut it back and that's it and i'm going to do that on all of these I'm gonna cut them all the way back, even the smaller ones, to be about the same height. And that's about it. Honestly, I might even cut that back, cut back just a little bit farther. <laughs> Cause I want him to grow more upright. Right now he's gonna lean. So I'm trying to encourage this to be a little bit more tighter knit. If I were to have a lot of uh, smaller growth, then I'm gonna cut all of that off too. Let's see if I can show you. Here's another example. This plant is about I don't know, a couple feet tall. And I'm gonna cut it off at about a third. I want all of these to be very uniform, so I'm gonna go at them at the very the same. But I don't know if you can tell, there's like some nodes right here, right here, and right here. I want to cut right above it. That's why we like to wait till spring to cut things back, because you can start to see where things are swelling. And this is like encouraging right here, and cut it back. Both of these varieties are gonna bloom on new wood. So right here, this is where the new shoots and stems are gonna start off of. So they will then grow and produce new stems like this, and then will bloom on the end of these towards the end of summer. This variety blooms, the tardivas bloom closer to the end of summer, and then these are gonna be the first ones. So the bobos will bloom first and then these guys. So I'm gonna set up the time lapse so that um, I can get the, all of this done and then at the very end, I'll show you a close up of how it all looks. Let's go.
That's gonna be a lot of work. I think I need a t-shirt. Sweating. Hey, but this thing is amazing. It's like angled just perfectly. So it's better than like a leaf rake, it's more stiff. I think this is like my secret weapon. It's great and it doesn't tug on the irrigation lines, which is great. Oh, okay, let's go change. Okay, that was, uh, that, was, uh, that was a lot. My endurance is lacking. I've got to build that back up. I got all of the hydrangeas pruned on Hydrangea Hill, and I also raked down all of the mulch. I'm out of time, so I just made piles for the mulch, and I'll have to come back maybe tomorrow or the next day and actually get them up. But I wanted to show you what all we got done. I think it looks completely different and so much better. These are the piles that I still need to get up. And I, I ended up making a few piles that I'll just have to get the wheelbarrow and a pitchfork in here. We'll address hiding the drip line later. That is not top priority. Oh, let me show you the hydrangeas. Okay, so Tardiva, I showed you. I cut these down like pretty hard. These, I don't believe, like they hadn't been pruned back. I don't know if they have ever been pruned back, even when they were at the nursery. There was no cuts to show that. Hey, Cranky. Hey, baby. I just did like a full hard takedown on those. And then over here on the Bobos, what I did was you can see like where they were cut back last year. So uh, the season before is this is like this nodule right here is where the cut was. You can see on all of these and I just followed it all the way back to where there was a node and the first set of nodes is what I cut like right above. Now when you're doing this many hydrangeas, I am not going in and making sure it's literally like exact above the next set of buds. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, thinking it's just like an inch or two above. So uh, that's what I did all the way down. And on both rows are done. I did not have time to tackle over there, but I did get the mulch raked, which I think looks amazing. Looks so much better. So I'll just have to come back in here and get up the mulch piles. But whew, that was a good haul for today. I think that was uh, very productive. The next project, I will tackle is getting up the rest of the mulch chunks out of the beds and then hopefully next video I'll show you how I prune the hydrangea tree standards. I did not have time to do that today so I'll show you that and then maybe even some limelights. We are going to be working on a, a couple more jobs for clients that might be a good opportunity to show you this too. So I hope this was helpful and insightful and I will see you in the next video.